Um, joining me now is Uber's Cosplay, who is apparently fresh from space, so that's cool. Um, since we've been having fun with the audio today, could you say something so we can make sure they can hear you before we go too far? Testing, testing. That is the appropriate response. All right, we'll give them Good. a second. Like, I see the green lines, but I've been lied to before, so we'll just give it a moment and find out. Okay, they have confirmed that they can hear us, so right, in that case, okay. awesome. So we will kick this off. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back. Um, as I said before, I've got Uber's Cosplay here. Um, if you've been going to Cosplay America for a few years, pretty good odds if you've seen a giant robot walking around, he was in it. Um, we, we've had a few others, but he's definitely been the most consistent robot, which is an amazing title. Um, and that we've also caught you in mid-move, so if you've ever wanted yeah. to see the magic behind the machine, like, excellent. So yeah, uh, I'm going to yeah, give the super brief intro from your website profile but feel free to add and adjust as needed so um sure. all right uber's cosplay when it comes to bigger is better costumes few do it as uber's cosplay does since 2011 uber's cosplay has built an army of mecha ranging from the classic rx-78 gundam to the mount alt eisen or alt eisen i can't work i can't words at all you got it right yeah you got it right yeah <laughs> with each costume he strives to build experience with new techniques and materials he dabbles in everything from vinyl decals and pastel weathering to complex electronics like motion-activated sound and lighting effects. While he uses a variety of materials, his suits are primarily made from PVC sheets, a weapon of choice for a smoother and cleaner look. He's a strong believer that one should never sacrifice the cleanliness and details for the sake of size alone. He's won seven Best of Show Awards, the Best Armor Award in the inaugural 2016 Cosplay Gen Awards in Switzerland, and nearly a dozen other major awards. So. Yeah, little robot flex. All those ones up there. I haven't nice. put those away yet. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's awesome, man. How you been? Good, but very hectic. Like I said, I'm in the middle of a move yeah. right now, so all these bins back here. I, I can definitely see that. Yeah, filled with cosplay stuff and giant robot stuff, all that good thing. Oh, that makes sense. Um, have you been hyped about the soon-to-walk giant robot? in japan yeah that's gonna be the beginning of october yeah um, i'm really excited excellent cool well i will definitely um hand things over to you now so welcome all right thank you very much for the introduction um so as well said for anyone that might be unfamiliar with my work uh i'm mostly known for giant robot costumes if you were at cosplay america last year you might have seen my unicorn gun i'm stomping around but I do various large oversized props. Um, I've made some go-kart tanks, do various swords, that kind of thing, but primarily oversized props. And I get asked a lot about what my specific process is when I'm building a part. And since I'm making a costume right now, uh, I will, will be able to put on a little video that I was able to put together of showing some of the step-by-step -step process of how I build the torso. And the torso is a really good example because the torso has to be able to break down for shipping. It uh, has fiberglass in it, so it's a little bit of the PVC work I do and some fiberglass. And there's conduit pipe in it to help it break apart. It's just a good example of a little bit of everything. So hopefully this will go answer some of your guys' questions about how I built some of my large size props. Okay, and just to confirm for me, um, can you see the video, or are we just going to hit play at the same time? Sorry? Uh, for when I hit play in the video, can you see it, or do we um, need to do like a oh, three, I've two, got, one second? I've, I've got it open here on uh, Twitch. I'm not sure if I'm okay. able to see it. There will be a very slight delay for you, so just be aware. Um, for anyone at home who's wondering why, that's the internet's fault. So, awesome. I'll get it moving, and if it's weird, just let me know. Yep, it is playing. 
All right, so here you see the initial breakdown of the 3D model that I'm using for the costume. This is the RX-79 Brown Gundam. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are already familiar with PEP, but PEPACUR is a program that's used for turning uh, 3D models into two-dimensional patterns that you can then print out on paper. This one in particular was by a PEPACUR artist called Military Corpse, but a lot of times I'll pull them from video games or other sources. Now, obviously there's a lot more to the model than just the torso, so I've had to isolate it down. Here you'll see the parts highlighted in pink. These are just the parts for the torso that's been isolated down. Um, you can see various details are cut out and omitted because those don't need to be made in this pattern. I can go back to do those later. Um, a thing to keep in mind with the Japanese programs is they're set to Japanese standard paper uh, when you start. So it's gonna be set to A4. When you have the program open, make sure you have it set to letter and reduce your margins as much as possible to reduce the amount of waste you're gonna have when you're transferring this pattern over. These patterns can be printed out out of a regular laser jet printer and uh, you'll get alignment marks for parts that go across multiple pages. So don't worry if you've got large pieces. Here you see I have a large part that's going across two separate pages. Using these black alignment marks in the corners, you can line up a large part that is going to cross over multiple pages. What I'll do is I'll just take a ruler and remove one side of the page along those alignment marks. Right across here. And now I can use the alignment marks to match up the two halves of the part and just use some regular scotch tape to attach it together. You just got to make sure you watch the alignment marks on the edges to keep it as lined up as close as possible. And here's part of the collar section around the neck of the suit. Also a large part, but it's the same process. You'll see you have the alignment marks. You just have to cut off one side, line it up to the black lines, and attach them together again. Some of these parts, uh, especially for the torso, being that it's so large, will actually go across as many as four or six pages. And once again, just cutting off one side of the template, lining up to the other sheet with the alignment marks. And I'm sure if anyone's here that's familiar with PEP, this will seem kind of redundant, but I'm just going through it one, one step at a time. Now, once you have these smaller parts, you just wanna reduce the amount of waste you're gonna have as much as possible. So you're gonna cut off all of this extra superfluous space around the parts to make them as small as possible. Because when you're transferring these to the one millimeter PVC sheeting, you wanna waste as little as possible just to save yourself some money. Not that the PVC is particularly expensive, but no sense in wasting if you don't have to. So go ahead and Remove all these parts. Now you have to attach these parts, these templates to your PVC sheet. What I'll do is I'll take a piece of masking tape, just regular run of mill masking tape, and using an X-Acto blade, I'll cut it into tons of little tiny strips. I'll use these strips to attach it onto the plastic.
Now that I've got this particular part laid out, I'll go ahead and I'll use those tape pieces I made to tape it down to the one millimeter PVC. Now you want to use a lot of different pieces in all different points because as you cut this out, the part will gradually become less secure. So the more pieces of tape you use will hold it in place more securely as you cut it out. The idea is to arrange all the parts in such a fashion as to get the most out of the sheet as possible. You can see here I've tried to reduce the amount of blank space as much as possible, the idea being cut down on the amount of wasted plastic. But once these are all on, uh, transferred and taped onto the sheet, you can go ahead and start cutting out all the parts. Now that they're into manageable sections, you can go ahead and start cutting them out of the individual pieces you've cut. This is one of the chest pieces. And you'll see there's two different kinds of lines, solid lines and dotted lines. Dotted lines are going to be cuts on the inside. Solid lines are cuts from the reverse. This is a piece that's completely cut out. Now, to reduce the amount of, of uh, cleanup you have to do on the outside of the part, you can do a V cut on the part on the fold to where it'll fold towards the outside. Let me show you here. This line has been scored, so I'll take a knife, and the idea is to cut into it vertically on both sides to make a V. It does not have to be exact because this side will be facing towards the inside. People will not see this, but just hold the blade at this angle and slowly pull it down. And now you see we have a small strip of the plastic that's can re that can be removed. And we'll do the same thing with the reverse side. It's very important for this to have a very sharp blade, but you wanna make sure you're taking care not to cut yourself. But now that we have that V channel, we can do a very nice clean bend on the part. And because of that bend, will there be very minimal cleanup needed on the opposite side. Now for the other cuts, the ones that were dotted lines, these are going to be bending in the opposite direction. But because we're cutting on the reverse side, you only have to score it. You can see here where the bend is going to be when the part is folded over. So I'll take the piece of paper that was the original pattern to mark out where this line will be. And just carefully score the line. The idea is not to cut through the part, just to lightly score it. Now the part can be bent. Just give it a light bend. You don't want the part to snap. And there you go. I'm afraid this part looks like it repeated. <laughs> Sorry. But these, the removing material from the edge of the part uh, we'll also align, let the edges line up just like we're doing here.
All these parts have now been removed for the torso. The parts are not glued together yet. They're just held together with masking tape. The masking tape is all attached on the outside and the glue is just a regular super glue, cryonoacrylate glue that is added from the inside of the parts to bond it together. But now it's basically like a puzzle. You just need to put these parts together. This is the center of the, the torso door. There's a large gap between these that's not actually in the model. So I just cut it out a shape in three, millimeter, in three millimeter Sintra to put between the two halves to give it the distance required. The two sections have now been attached to the bottom of the cockpit door. This is all just bonded with regular slow zap type super glue. The front of the chest of this Gundam has two large uh, rectangular portions on either side of the chest. These are attached with the glue from the front and from the inside, the extra plastic is cut away with a hobby knife. Now the two front sections have been attached. These will be where the vents and the lights and everything get uh, mounted for the costume when it's more complete. The two sections on either side of the torso are for the ascent wire and the flaring armor on the side of the chest. These are also just super glued in. Now the cockpit section is attached directly onto the rest of the body as well as the section around the neck. You can see there's still some masking tape here to hold parts together while glue cures. Now there's a lot of parts of plastic inside the torso that are going to get in the way. So we're gonna to need to cut them away. They're just there initially to have the parts hold the structure. All these portions on the lower side and on the sides of the torso will need to be cut away so that we'll have a place to fit our body. Here you see I've marked out what parts need to be cut away. On the chest, it's very important to have the cut be as far forward on the breast as possible, because this will give you a lot of motion with your arm. If you have it too close, your mobility will be very limited. So make sure you cut far forward. Now that we've started to cut this all away, you can see how much more space we'll have to fit our body inside the costume. The area where the where your head and neck will go through will also need to be cut away. And here's a basic uh, shot of where we stand right now and you can see that the shape is really starting to come together. The next part is we're going to have to start to add a mounting point for where the shoulders will eventually be mounted. Shoulders on the Gundams tend to be, tend to rest at a very high angle to give them what I call like a superhero type stance. So we can't just attach these directly onto the torso. We're going to need to put a wedge here that will then be able to mount the, the shoulder armor. You can see here I've marked out where the shoulder armor aligns to the torso. So now we know how big this wedge needs to be. In this case, it was about four and a half inches wide. To build the wedge, I used some three millimeter Sintra. This is slightly thicker than what the rest of the body is built out of because this will need to put up with a little more stress. The two triangular wedges are cut to the angle that I think gives the, uh, the shoulders the most heroic proportion. These are glued together 
and then attached to either side of the torso. This is now the completed wedge. Just like with the other parts of the costume, those wedges are glued into place. And now you can see that the torso will be able to hold the shoulders at a very high heroic anime looking posture rather than if they were just bolted directly on, they would sag and look kind of sad. But now we need to toughen up the torso to where it's going to be able to withstand all the weight of all the parts it's going to eventually hold. Here is the underside of where that wedge is attached. We want to make sure that wedge is strong as well, so we're going to cut away the one millimeter plastic underneath it. Cutting away that plastic is going to give us room to work inside when we eventually reinforce it with fiberglass. The fiberglass is going to make the torso much stronger and able to withstand holding the weight of the rest of the costume. Now that the torso is built, we can start going on to the next step of strengthening it with the fiberglass. This is Bondo 3M resin and uh, fiberglass matting. It's important when you're working with fiberglass to make sure you have per, uh, the proper protection. Make sure you're wearing a mask and that you're not working in an enclosed space. You want to work somewhere with a lot of good ventilation. Also make sure you keep your workspace very clean after you're done working with this because this stuff gets into carpets and things that can be really, really messy. Uh, you want to cut the mat into some manageable sections, particularly some long strips because the idea is you're going to be following around the neck and the back of the torso. So you wanna have small enough pieces to work in those limited areas. It's a good idea rather than trying to fight with the resin to just get disposable brushes. These chip brushes you can get at any kind of home improvement store like Home Depot for only a few cents a piece. You'll probably need about four or five of them for a project of this size. Fiberglass resin you pour into these small uh, disposable cups with a few drops of the hardener agent resin. You don't want to use too much, only about five or six drops per cup. Put the fiberglass mat into the torso and slowly dab resin onto it with the brush. The idea is to get inside of the wedges that will hold the shoulders especially, as well as the back plate and the area around the front of the neck. The idea is to create this full circle around you where your neck will be out of fiberglass. You wanna go probably two or three layers inside the wedges and at least two layers on the back since the back will also have a plate that will support the backpack. So it's going to need to be extra strong. This is the torso after about the second layer. I find that one pack of mat was enough to do the entire torso for this particular suit. So I didn't need too much. The fiberglass will take about a day to fully cure. And like I said, you wanna make sure you're in a well ventilated area because the fumes will be really nasty. You don't wanna mess with that. So for the rigging, uh, I use a simple trail maker backpack. This one you can get off Amazon for like $10. It's really nothing. But I go ahead and I cut off the back straps and the entire plate so I can use that as the basis for what's going to hold the costume. Basically, I'm making the Gundam torso into the backpack. Here now, the front of the backpack has been cut off and we're left with the plate and the straps, as well as the padding on the back. This will all be bolted into the torso 
and this will be what supports the, the costume on your body. This is why it's very important to put two or three layers of fiberglass on the back of the torso because these are going to bolt through it. And if it's just the plastic, they will rip out. Now you can't just put bolts straight through either. You have to have something to help it grip. In this case, these are washers with hex nuts, uh, with, sorry, with wing nuts on the end. The bolt is going to grab the wing, is going to grab the washer and pull with the wing nut. If it's just the head of the bolt, it could rip out. So it's important that you use washers for this step. We're going to use these on the shoulders where the torso will attach. I mean, where the shoulders will attach the torso. So take a washer and mark out with a pencil on equal sides where you want the washers and the bolts to go through. You'll copy these measurements over to the shoulders as well. In this case, the shoulder wedges were about four and a half inches wide. So you just wanna put them on equal spaces on either side. If you put them all in the middle, the shoulder could turn or bend in an odd way. So you wanna make sure you go far out to the edge. Now that you have those marks, you can drill out the holes and put the bolts through them. You can see here I've marked on the shoulder with a pencil where the holes need to be for the shoulder to receive the bolts from the torso. And once they're through, you put another washer as well as the hex nut, and that holds the, sh the shoulder very tightly to the torso. This way too, you can break it apart if you ever need to for storage. You don't have to worry about having this giant wide piece hanging around, you can break it apart. And now the shoulders are able to sit at the proper high heroic angle, like on most of the Gundam models. Now the idea is for these costumes, we wanna transport them. The torso is a very large part, so we need a way to break that down. So using a piece of masking tape here, I've marked a line across the middle of the torso that we're going to cut across with a Dremel. And we're going to make these two parts uh, be able to separate and relock together. This way we're able to break it down for shipping as well as just storage. Using a cutoff wheel on a Dremel, make sure that you're using eye protection when using one of these, because if a wheel breaks, it could very seriously injure you. So make sure you're wearing eye protection. And of course, like anything with fiberglass, because you will be cutting fiberglass, make sure you're using proper ventilation and you're wearing a mask as well. Set it to a fairly low setting and you can slowly gut a, cut across the part. Here now you see that the torso has been separated into two pieces, a back half with all the mounting points for the shoulders and the front half. The front half will eventually hold the lighting, the batteries, as well as the speakers for the costume. So it's the much lighter section right now. Now we need to make the parts able to come back together again at command. These are some PVC conduit pipe. This in particular is three fourth inch size. We've got two T-junctions for either side, as well as a length of pipe. We'll need about three inches of pipe. So cut two sections of three inch pipe. The pipes can be glued into one side of each T-junction. In this case, I'm using the same glue I used to build the Gundam itself. This is just regular Zappagap thick, types, thick type CA glue. The purple bottle is an accelerator that will heat up and cure the glue fast. Now that those are attached, 
the idea is we're not going to glue in the other side because this will be the point where the armor parts disconnect from one another. But we're going to put them together now without using glue and just fit them into the body to make sure that everything's in the right position. Here I'm using a few things to hold the torso in place while I place these connecting rods. The parts that are in the back towards the back of the torso will be glued in to the back side, where the front ones will be glued into the front half. This way the parts will be able to disconnect. So go ahead and use a large amount of that same CA type glue to attach the two T connectors to either side of the torso. Once they are dry, the parts can be separated. As a level of extra security, it's a good idea to add some kind of locking mechanism here, because as you're moving around at a show, parts can get shaken loose, and that includes these connectors. So on the top of the shoulders, we're going to add a metal pins that go across the two parts that can be inserted and pulled out when you want to break down the torso. So we're going to mark out where we want to add these, these holes for these pins on either side. For the pins, it's a good idea, in my experience, to use some heavy gauge wire. The most ready uh, wire supply I had at this moment was I had a wire hanger in my closet. Using the Dremel, I just cut out a large section of that wire. You'll need about three and a half, maybe four inches of wire for either side of the torso. Using a small set of pliers, you can go ahead and bend these into the end shape you'll need to where they can be used as locking pins. Now these pins have been bent into shape. Now we just need to mark out where to drill the holes so the pins can be placed. Now this is where the pin is going to be placed. You can see I've already placed one in. This is why it's important to have so much extra fiberglass around the shoulder sections. If these pins are just through plastic with no fiberglass reinforcements, they could rip out uh, if they got shaken around or something. So it's important that you double up on the fiberglass in these sections in particular. So mark out where these will be and drill your holes with a small drill bit. Now that the locking pins are complete, we can go ahead and attach the backpack to the costume. Uh, the same, same process as for attaching the shoulders, we want to make sure we're using a large washer before we put the bolts through them. If you just put the bolt directly through the backpack, the small head will eventually rip out of the backpack and the entire costume will become unsupported. So make sure you use the washer to help the bolts grip onto the torso. This is also why it's so important to make sure you have adequate amounts of fiberglass on the back plate. Uh, if you don't put enough, it'll warp or bend. So you want at least two, ideally three layers of this. You want to make sure you put them at four different points, two high, close to either shoulder, and two lower near the bottom of the plate. This will make sure that it stays nice and flush and doesn't wobble around.
now we can go ahead and wear the costume. You can see now how everything is supported off of this torso section. The shoulders are hanging off of it, the backpack will be attached to the back, and the skirt armor will hang from it. This is why this part of the costume has to be the most reinforced and the strongest part. But it's also the largest part of the costume, so it has to have these plugs and everything in it to help break down for shipping. And after some paint, a lot of LED work, and a lot of airbrushing, this was the finished costume. All right, and that does it for that video portion. Sorry you had to rush through so much of that, but like I said, all my tools and things are packed up, so I didn't have a lot of options. But I do have the torso itself here if anyone wants to go over anything in greater detail or if you want me to show anything in particular about it. That's the torso right there. Obviously still a lot of work to do to it. I haven't added in the sections for the lights and the guns in the chest or the details for the vent yet, but all the core pieces are done. These are the locking pins, which were mentioned in the video. It's a simple little metal wire, this side of the torso. Let's me break down or so into two pieces, which is a lot easier to manage now if I want to box it up, take it to a show on the other side of the country. Still there, Will? Yep, I'm still here. Um, actually, I have a question for you. So it looks like a lot of the things that you showed us were probably the result of something going wrong at some point that you've learned and adjusted your methodology for. Is that accurate? Yes, especially the part where the costume has to be able to break down for transit. Yeah. Um, because when I had to go to that costume contest in Switzerland, I didn't have a costume I could fit on a plane. So that's why the ground Gundam that I had at your guys to show was designed to break down so much. Every part breaks down and nests inside of each other for that reason. So I could have something I could fit on a plane. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And, and of course, by making all of the separate parts, you then had to mm -hmm. be able to reinforce them so it also still works. Right. And it's the same thing, not just on the torso, but all parts of the costume. This is one of the shoulder pieces. And on the ground gun, it has this little flange, like if it was going to be carried by a helicopter. And you don't think much about it, but that little extra piece can take up a lot of space. It makes the part that much larger. So this is magnetically attached to where it can come off. And I can store this inside, say, the foot or something when it's being transported. And same thing with the shoulder armor, all hinged and magnetic to where it can break down flat. So if I want to ship it or transport it ahead of me. Forgive me, I'm going through a pile of parts over here. It's understandable. And it'll be the same thing with the leg. This is going to be the leg of the costume. And right now, the top section of the knee is off because that is going to be magnetically attached to for transit. The other gun that I'm building has a much larger knee section. It's actually this large piece right here much larger than the other one. So this entire section is going to be able to come off and store inside of this for when it transports. So just as uh, everything I can do to keep the size down as much as possible, because these large costumes obviously can be a real pain to get around. Yeah, does that factor into which ones you choose to make? Because I imagine it would be a lot harder to transport like a big, you know, largely solid piece Zaku type mech instead. Right. And that's why I'm doing the ground Gundam again, honestly, is because it's pretty much the perfect choice 
for a suit that can go to different shows around the globe just because of the large container backpack. I can design so much of the suit to be broken down and fit inside this container for when it has to move around. So it gives me a lot of options. And for anyone interested, the other suit building to go alongside them is the EZ8. So it'll be these two when they're complete. Nice. I've actually got the head of the EZ8 mostly complete here. It's quite a bit meatier than the regular Gundam. Yeah, that's not exactly a neck. No, and he's got a much, he's got a very pronounced chin. This was actually a really interesting helmet because to get the face plate off, it's got a ton of stuff that comes off with it. Like the whole section in front of the eye comes off, as well as all this around the chin just to make the face plate accessible. But you can see how much, much more there is to that than my normal face mask. And is that just all magnets? Sorry? Is that all like aligned by magnets? Or Yeah, there's three magnets on the top. You can see okay. that all align to the inside of the head. So then this just goes like so, locks into place. Cool. I was especially proud of this little piece here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, if chat has any questions, I'll be happy to repeat them for you, too. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and ask. You can just see in comparison how much larger the one is than the other. Even though they're based on the same suit, it's just this one is supposed to have a lot of additional armor. Yeah. A bit bulkier. But uh, with the EZ-8 um, that I'm building, because I'm building two at the same time, I'm going to try to add a lot of extra paint and weathering detail to that versus the ground venom, as well as some new weapons and other things just like uh, when you mentioned things I've learned is making the feet more manageable because those are another large part that's always been difficult to break down for transport. So I've got some ideas for how I'm going to make those smaller and more manageable. Try to see if I can make like the front section nest into the back when it's transporting. That makes sense, yeah. Um, I know that when I was helping you bring in one of them a few years ago, it was really weird to actually like hold it because when you look at it, it definitely looks big and metal and bulky. Um, mm -hmm. But in practice, like obviously weight's a consideration if you're going to be wearing it. So that makes sense. I just dropped a bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's Sorry. fair. I tried to grab one thing and everything fell apart. <laughs> but yeah, these are, the parts themselves are very lightweight. Um, with the, plas the plastic itself is only one, one millimeter thick. The torso will actually end up being the heaviest part of the costume because that's got the fiberglass in it. But um, like the Gundam suit in particular, I don't think the whole thing together weighs more than 30 pounds. It's very lightweight. The only thing is on the EZ-8, it has like these flanges on the shoulder. Another thing like where a helicopter could pick it up. I use these conduit pipes. And these are actually heavier. Just the pipe is heavier than the rest of the shoulder itself. So hmm. Just to give you an idea of how light that is. Cool. The only, uh, the only downside with it is it is a little more fragile than like EVA foam. But personally, I prefer the plastic versus the foam. I think it looks better. And uh, the foam always—I find the foam always has a tendency to kind of look gummy, almost. So it's just my my preference is the PVC. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're actually doing okay on this one. Like they're they're definitely here and they've been watching. Um, I know earlier we had a few instances where people were taking notes like the entire time, so I'd sort of shake them yeah. down for questions. Unfortunately, because we ran through the whole thing, is I kind of understand that people don't have many questions. Like I said, it was, it was the kind of thing where I couldn't really do a video of it live, being that there was so much to do. And right. I, I, was gonna be um, but, I guess one uh, question that I would have also, so you were talking about leaving extra room in the front on the inside, or as much as you could. Right. Um, is that both for structure reasons and for, like, do you, like, have vents or something in there? Well, on this guy in particular, you can see that a lot of this has been cut away. Uh -huh. If you saw in the video, there's a pilot that I'm going to put in the cockpit. So that's what all that space there is going to be for. 
So I'll have to make like a little seat and have the pilot figure inside of there. But on either side, from the inside, this will usually hold like the cooling fans and the batteries and the lights and things like that. So for now, this is the light part of the costume. But once I start adding, adding the batteries and things in, that's why it's important to have fiberglass there because it'll start to sag if you don't have it. Right. And all that. Okay, that so makes the, sense. So the idea is to make it like a ring around your neck because everything's supported around that section. And that's also why I was saying it's important to have this deep cut on the side because when you go to reach for your face, that's where your arm is going. So if you want to take the mask off, you have to have this section all cut out. And that was something that took me a few costumes to kind of figure out for just getting that mobility. Did and you need you a squire to... in some of them? <laughs> so, yeah, sure. My girlfriend Shirley's always helping me out, but you want to try to get as mobile as you can. You can see that once the shoulder's on there, then the front of this will still be able to move. That's how I get my arm around. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, I guess, um, thank you for like, you know, doing this in the middle of your move. Uh, that's obviously not the best time to stop everything and teach people how to make robots, but we appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sorry that the timing kind of worked out bad for that. Well, I mean, like you did it. It's awesome. Like we appreciate it. Like, I don't think anyone's schedule was really planned right for this year. So that's totally fine, but we do appreciate you helping out with this. On the, on the plus side, too, where I'm going, I'll have a full-on garage, and I'm going to be making a full-on workshop with a much better video setup. Oh, nice. So hopefully hopefully stuff like this in the future will go a lot smoother. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you go, and we need everyone about a 10-minute break before we start the next one. So maybe if people are shuffling to grab food or something, I'll give them the minutes they need to do that. So All right, that sounds good. Cool. Thank you very much. No, thank you for having me. All right, I'm looking forward to seeing you next year, man. See you then. Take care, everyone.